I tell you what, uh, for, for the start of this year, uh, a message that I shared in your, uh, your all-in-one team night uh, recently uh, was Do It Now. And uh, I, that's a book that I've written recently. What a good book to give to somebody for the year 2022. And uh, just to say, look, let's, let's make sure that we are putting our best foot forward, taking a step into the future, and we're not going to be immobile in, in inertia anymore. And another book that I've uh, just finished was the book Disciple. And it was written out of a conviction uh, during COVID. I found a lot of people, their, their Christianity fell apart. And I'm, I'm not going to lay it all at their feet either because I think as leaders, sometimes we've been making churchians uh, instead of Christians. And uh, I think we've got to think of churchianity sometimes instead of just Christianity. And I think uh, people are thinking, look, if I go along to church, I'm good, right? I turn up at church, I'm good, right? Or if I bring my friend to church, it's good, right? But actually, you can bring them to Jesus. And I'm not talking about not going to church because I am a, I'm a church rat. Uh, I am always in church. I love church with all my heart. But I don't want to... Be, be thinking that that is the beginning and ending of my Christianity. Because as soon as I walk out that door, I want to be a disciple of Jesus. And so the second thing was, I also found that there were a lot of uh, disappointments in leaders in the kingdom throughout 21 and 22. There were some high-ranking, well-known, quite famous personalities in the Christian world who fell, stumbled, and we all felt a little embarrassed to be part of that part of the crew. And I found there were people who, who started to question whether or not they wanted to keep following Jesus. And so when the rhythms of church life fell away, and then a few heroes stumbled, it was like people thought, well, man, do I really want to be a believer, a, a, this kind of Christian anymore? So I was, was determined to write a book called Disciple, which I've been trying to write this book for 15 years. And it's about ruthless following of Jesus whether anybody else in the entire world decides they're going to follow Christ, I am going to follow. I have decided I will follow. I take up my cross and lay down my life and follow Jesus Christ. And uh, no matter how many people fall, even if the people who led me to Jesus fall over, I am still, because I know Him, I'm walking with Him, He's done nothing bad for me but good all my life, I'm going to live for Him. So, uh, this message is about the great rebuild. So I want to talk about you and I being involved in a great restoration, a great recovery, a great rebuilding of the church. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Some of them are very negative in their predictions about churches in the future because of what we've gone through. I don't subscribe because I've read the end of the book and the thing that wins is the church. I will build my church, Jesus said, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And believe me, even though we're online, and I love online services, the word church literally means a gathering. A gathering of the called out people. A physical gathering. And I know there's traffic. I know there's like all kinds of reasons why not. But there is a greater reason why. To be part of that gathered body, it, it snookers every other reason we have got. I don't know if you've heard that before, but... Yeah, every other reason is snookered by that reason. Coming to Jesus. I'm from Australia. Forgive me for weird sayings. Okay. So let's get on with this dinky dive message. Amen. <laughs> Psalm 126 verse 1 says, When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. So coming up on your New Year's Eve and New Year's uh, services, you're going to have dream services. Pastor Jake and Nicole and the team of location pastors, they're going to be praying and believing together for your dreams coming into the, into the coming year. Now, let me say this. There's our dreams and there's God dreams. And God, He wants to hear your desires, no doubt about it. But before you go there, go to His, His throne and say, what do you want me to do, Lord? Put your dreams in my heart. Let me carry out your purpose. I am wanting to be a servant of yours, not you be a servant of mine. 
You're not here just to make my dreams come true. And in fact, you will find there is a great law of indirection in the kingdom of God that when you seek His will, yours comes to pass. But if you seek in yours first, life can be a mess. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we're coming out of isolation, lockdowns, and COVID problems. We're going to come out of mask wearing, out of all the restrictions. That It's all going to end. And I believe in that hour, even the people who are feeling a little nervous about coming back to church, I would urge you to feel the freedom and, and the lifting of those, uh, those fears, anxieties about being part of a gathering again. Because when the Lord brings back the captivity of Zion, dreams come back. I'm loving this message already. You know, like, because when you're in captivity, you don't dream. When you are locked down, you don't dream. When hopelessness has come into our heart, hope goes out of our mind. And we're treading water. We're just marking time, waiting for something good to happen. But the fact is, you got to start dreaming again to come out of actual oppression. I found the power of a dream to be way, way more powerful than I would give it credit for. These people that are singing this song had spent 70 years, seven zero years in Babylon. They had lost their homes. They'd lost their nationhood. They'd lost their names. They lost their culture, they lost their songs, they lost their stories, they lost their legacy, they lost everything. They, their education was replaced by a new kind of education in the art of magic and Phoenician culture and Babylonia, which was anti-God. It's called identity theft. We have a big problem with identity in today's world. The deal was that those Israelites had shifted from worshiping God, the true God, the Lord, to worshiping false gods, Baal and Ashtaroth. They were worshiping these false gods, and so they lost their identity already. The God you worship is the person you become. We, begin, we get filled with the spirit of the songs we sing. So they are looking at a false God, so a false identity starts to form inside of them. So they lose their location. They lose their actions. So they've got nothing to define them anymore. You know, you, you remember who you are when you get back into your space. But when you drift from your space and your activities, you, you kind of get lost. You think, who am I? The prodigal left his home to get away from the father and accountability, to spend all his money and do whatever he wants. But he ended up in a pigsty. He forgot who he was. And then when he remembered who he was, it turned him around. And he said, what am I doing here? My, the servants in my father's house eat better than I do. I need to go back to the house to rediscover who I am. I need to get back. My, I need to get my placement, my, my geography my location, my surroundings right, so that I'm doing the right things, and that's what defines me. Even Batman says, what you do defines you. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the movie. I saw it, and I heard that. Oh, that's so different from all the psychobabble you hear. The people say, oh, you got to be before you do. I don't know. Sometimes you got to do before you be. And, uh, and being a human being means I'm also a human doing. And so I am, I'm going to actually, the two are mixed in. But when, when we lose our place, when we are out of the house, we lose our identity. We don't know who we are anymore. And we live in a, a kind of a dangerous time, could I say this? Can I, can I say this? That when we allow feelings to become the authority that tells us who we are in our life, they change all the time. They're up and down. Like if my feelings are dragging me up, they're also going to drag me down. I need an objective outside of me truth that says this is who you are. And on that basis, I'm able to establish an identity that's, that's unshakable. So these guys went all the way down. They lost everything. 
And now, 70 years later, Daniel begins to pray. He begins to pray that the fulfillment of a prophecy he read in the book of Jeremiah. So here's Jeremiah writing a prophecy about how the Israelites will be dispersed for 70 years and then they will be brought back. And Daniel realized 69 years. He hasn't, he hasn't compromised his identity, even though everything around him is yelling at him. He's a different kind of person. He has stayed true to God in the Word. He's reading Scripture. That's how he found Jeremiah's prophecy. He's praying every day, three times a day. They pass a law to stop him. And it says in Jeremiah 29.10, For thus says the Lord, after 70 years I completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. So here's Daniel saying in Daniel 9.2, In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So overnight, the Babylonian king was overthrown and Cyrus, the king of Persia, came on board and he said, go home and build your temple to the Jewish people. Just like that. Because Daniel prayed the prayer and the prophecy came to pass. And so when they turned around, they're saying, we're like those who dream. It seemed like this could never happen. After 70 years of lockdown, we're suddenly set free. And that is why I am saying to you that in the year 22, 2022, we are going to see a great rebuilding, a great recovery, a great restoration. God will turn us around suddenly in the name of Jesus. Yeah, so these guys, as I said, they'd lost everything and they came back absolutely changed. Now, the power of dreaming comes from the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit moves in us when we begin to worship. Psalm, the next verse in the Psalm, 126 verse 2, Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. They were not singing before. They were not laughing before in oppression. And i gotta, I got to say this to you, that there is a lot of the Christian life following Jesus that is going to be painful. Anybody who's trying to sell you a gospel that says there's, there's no pain, you're going to be delivered and set free and joyful all the time, they are wrong. Your greatest victories are going to come out of some of the most difficult, challenging times. If you'd want a life without pain, don't choose Christianity. There's plenty of other religions around. But this one, we are chosen. We are called to follow Christ and feel the pain. But even when we are, we will have joy. In the midst of the trials, you can still be a joyful person. I know that sounds weird. But, but you will find an ability to live in victory above your circumstances. Faith, faith isn't just about getting a miracle and the whole situation is solved. Faith is about living an unsolved situation. Faith is about living above, seated with Christ, above the difficulty while it's getting worked out, while it's still unresolved. And it may take a long time. So these guys are saying, then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. And they said amongst the nation, wow, God's done some great things for them. So, so that means when I'm in this oppression the spirit of Babylonia oppression, I'm not seeing it. And it's true. They taunted them down there. In Psalm 137 verse 1 says, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. We stopped move, moving. We didn't have momentum. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps on the willows in the midst of it. For there were those who carried us away captive, asked of us a song. And those who plundered us requested mirth saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? When I am misplaced, displaced, or replaced, I've got no song. I can't, I can't sing the Lord's song when I am living in a strange land, a land that's backslidden, a land that's away from God. There's no joy inside of me. And you never want to underestimate the power of your praise. The power of praise brings down the enemy brings down the, the, the demons that are trying to attack you. Bring down the devil that is trying to oppress you. And so they're, they're, they're taunting them. Come on, why don't you sing one of those? You're so depressed down here by the rivers of Babylon. I don't know if you remember that song. By the rivers of Babylon. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, it's, I don't know who even sang that. But the, the enemy knows the power of your praise, so he tries to shut you up. He'll do anything to stop you laughing and dreaming and singing. When we were trying to put up our building in Sydney, it took us eight years just to get the approval to do it. Three times we were knocked back by the local council. We had 40,000 people who signed petitions to oppose us building that building. We were on the six o'clock news, on the, on the current affair show, on the shame, shame, shame show. We were on so many things that were against us. We had witchcraft, warlocks, and occult people ringing us up, sacrificing chickens with gurgling sounds on the end, saying, you'll never build that building. All these weird things going on all around us, and we fought that. In the middle of that, I had to tell our people who were bringing offerings all the time, I had to say, look, we've got no authority to go ahead and build this building on that land that we've already bought, 11 acres, uh, but we're believing we're going to hang in there. So we went for it, and we went for it, and we went for it. And I would go down to that field, which was, had rusty old tractors, chicken sheds, where no chickens were anymore, dead horses, dead pigs, mountains of old bread. It was just like a dump with all this grass, as tall as this building, growing up. And I would stand where the pulpit was going to be, and I'd dream my dream. I'd start seeing people in front of me, and I'd start preaching to them, and preaching to them, and preaching to them. And then I'd have altar calls, and people would come down the front to receive Jesus. And then I'd do it again, and I'd have service after service, preaching in the weeds. You got a dream in the weeds. You got a dream in the opposition. You got a dream when it's all against you. Don't be thinking that your dream just comes to pass. You got a dream in opposition to what's coming against you. Keep the dream alive, even though the whole thing looks a mess. Because God knows the power of that dream. He puts a dream in our head, not for entertainment value. All of the Old Testament prophets, you'll say, they, you, you read, they saw this and they saw that. That wasn't just like to go to the movies. That was because it has a power. If you can conceive it in here, it starts to build in the spiritual. And as you continue to incubate it like an egg, in your head, dreaming on it, speaking it, saying it, and praying it. You are building something in the spiritual that eventually falls into the natural. It'll eventually manifest. Every, that's the way God runs the universe. He makes something out of nothing. And that's what you and I can do because we're created in the same image. But everything will come against you trying to do that and shut you down. The devil doesn't want you getting your dream to come to pass. He, he, he knows the power of your speaking. And so he knows the power of your testimony. He knows the power of your shout. He knows the power of conversations that are positive. He knows the power of agreement in the church. He knows the power of unity in communication. He knows the power of people who pray in the power of the Spirit. He knows the power of people who speak in tongues. And so the devil tries to silence the believer's mouth, silence their laughter, and silence their singing, and strike them dumb. But no longer will we be shamed into silence. No longer will we be silent in praise. No longer will we be silent how Jesus Jesus has set us free. No longer will we be shy, timid, fearful, and withdrawn. Boldness will fill our lives in Jesus' name. No longer will our prayers be unheard in heaven. Laughter will replace groaning. Praise will replace complaining. You and I, we're going to see 2022 as a rushing river of new life. Psalm 126 verse 4 says, Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. What's that mean? That means in the desert, there were dry riverbeds. And up in the mountains, the snow would fall in winter. But come spring, they would melt and they would have flash floods coming down through those empty riverbeds. Many, many churches all around the world have become empty through COVID. But we are in for the greatest revival we have ever seen. Flash floods of the power of God are about to come down the dry riverbeds in Jesus' mighty name. And those who have been sowing in tears throughout all of this time of dryness will doubtless come again, bringing their sheaves with Him. Sometimes it's hard to sow, but that's the best time to sow. The most valuable seeds sown are those that are sown in tears. 
when it's difficult, when it's challenging to reach out. But you kept doing it. You kept turning up at church. You kept sowing. I am believing with you. The greatest harvest you have ever had is about to come your way in 2022. Friends, if you've never asked Jesus to come into your life, now's the time to do that. If you've been away from God, time to come back. Start the year right. If you're not sure you're going to heaven, please make sure today. In a couple moments, I'm going to ask us all to pray. We're going to say, Jesus, I give you 2022. I want your dreams in my heart. Fulfill my prayers. Fulfill my desires. Help me follow. If you've never committed your life to Christ, please, when we pray, do that. If you're coming back to Christ, recommit. If you want to make sure you're going to heaven, put your faith in Him today. Can you say these words to God after me? Even if it's been embarrassing, you're at home, you're with other people in your own heart. Same on maybe a little later in the day. Get aside and seek the Lord. Can you say these words to God, please, right now? Dear God in heaven, I receive Jesus as my Savior. I trust you. I commit 2022 into your hands. Thank you, Father. Amen. God bless you. May the peace of God rest upon you powerfully. In Jesus' name, amen.